I'd like to call to order the September 6, 2016 regular meeting of the Bowling, Bing, Bowling Green Board of Commissioners. I invite you to stand if you choose while Police Chaplain Mike Holian provides our invocation. I invite you up, Chaplain Holian, right here. Mike, come over to the mic. Thank you. Dear God of love, justice and mercy, we give you thanks for the many blessings we enjoy as citizens of Bowling Green and for the leaders of our Board of Commissioners. May their dedication be an example for all of us assembled here this afternoon. I humbly pray that you place your angels of grace and mercy in all the discussions here this afternoon. I pray for our mayor and for the various officials of city government. And I ask you to graciously grant them wisdom to govern, give them a sense for the welfare of all our people, and a keen thirst for justice and righteousness. Today we welcome six new police officers and I ask for your protection for them and their families as they serve this community. Watch over these commissioners as they deliberate the issues facing our community. And I pray for the agenda set before this chamber to produce the grace we all seek this afternoon. It is in your most blessed and holy name we pray. Amen. Can we remain standing as we pledge allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mike. Please call the roll. Commissioner Perigen? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Denning? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Mayor Wilkerson? Here. The first item we have tonight is a public hearing, and the purpose of the public hearing is to review and receive comments on the proposed substantial amendments to the annual action plans for year seven and ten of the community development block grant program. Mr. Fibbo. Thank you, Mayor. Without uh, further ado, I ask uh, Brent Childers to come forward. He was here a while ago. All righty then. Hello, Mr. Childers, come on in. Big Brent. That's right, I have a public hearing tonight. Uh, apologies. Uh, we had an incident up at the building a while ago, so I'm a little disheveled, I apologize. Uh, but everybody's okay. Uh, public hearing tonight, the purpose of tonight's public hearing is to re receive comments on an amendment to year seven and year 10 CDBG annual action plan. What we're proposing to do is move a total of $32,206 between years seven and years 10 and reallocate those to United Way for their 211 funding. Uh, 211 is a new initiative here in the Barron River area that United Way is proposing. <clears throat> or is actually working. It started, it came online in July. Um, so what they'll be doing is uh, assistance referral. So people can call in to the 211 system. Uh, if they have needs or specific things, then 211 operators will connect them with uh, agencies where they can receive that type of assistance that they need. What we will be reimbursing is actually the calls from Bowling Green residents. So even though this is in the 10 county area, we would only be compensating them for calls from Bowling Green. Uh, so we've worked out uh, how we think that this will work best with United Way, uh, and that's what we're proposing. The public comment period runs till September 16th, so anyone wishing to make comment can do so tonight, or they can contact Nick Cook at nick, N-I-C-K dot cook, C-O-O-K at B-G-K-Y.org until close of business on September 16th. Uh, at this time, that's all my comments. I'd open the floor for any other comments. And if we've received none, Mayor, I'd ask you to close the public hearing. 
comments from the commission with regard to redirecting those unused funds? Um, my only question is, what are we are we going to get from our general fund the additional for the fifty? Okay. I think it's a much needed and a really welcome service for our community and surrounding counties. Great. Is the There's total amount you're looking for how 50, much? Fifty. Fifty thousand total. There's a public hearing that means that it's open to comments from the public. So if there's anyone that would like to make a comment with regard to the proposed reallocation of those funds for 211, this would be the opportunity for you to do that. Seeing no one step forward, we'll close this public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Childers. Under awards and recognitions, we have a couple tonight. Uh, we want to wish two uh, longtime city employees well as they move into the next phase of their life. Tony Whitmer, 21 years with the city as parks and golf maintenance superintendent. Uh, he's uh, retired to move to a new job in the private sector. And uh, Donnie Fry, after 20 years as assistant fire chief, uh, is retiring and I think resulting in a lot of things happening tonight later in the agenda. So we both wish them or wish them both very well in their in their retirement. Is there any other comments or awards recognitions? Right, Mr. DeFebo, you have any city manager comments? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, there'll be a need for an executive session. Uh, Katie will read the reasons. Pursuant to KRS 621-810, 1B for deliberations on the sale of real property by the city, but only when publicity would likely affect the value of the specific, the specific piece of property to be sold by the city. And KRS 61810-1C for discussions of pending litigation against the city. So move. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Up for the approval of minutes from the regular meeting on August 16th, 2016. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perigen. And any corrections or discussion? Please call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Next item on our agenda is public comments. If anyone, any member of the public would like to bring an item to the uh, commission's attention, this would be their opportunity for items that are not on tonight's agenda. So, Ms. Billion, this would be your opportunity. Hi there. Uh, first, I'd like to ask anybody here in support of fairness to please stand up. Thank you. My name's Lydia Billion, and I didn't grow up in Kentucky, but it has become my home. I attended and graduated from WKU, where I, as an ally, helped lead the LGBTQ Student Alliance. I got married here, and I have built friendships and community here, and most recently started Black Lives Matter Bowling Green. Part of that community includes LGBTQ individuals, or as I like to refer to them, American citizens that deserve equal rights, protections, and opportunities as should be granted by law. Ignoring fairness does not make it go away, and recent events show that not all our fellow citizens are protected. It needs to be the priority of this city commission to ensure a safe and fair environment, and you can do that by adding sexual orientation and gender identity to the city's non-discrimination policy. In the words of a dear friend who recently addressed this, commi this commission, excuse me, election day is coming. Many organizations, including Black Lives Matter Bowling Green, are working tirelessly to educate the people about this upcoming local election and show them in whom they can put their trust. For those of us who greatly value um, excuse me, social justice and equality, when one of us is unprotected, we all are. Your silence on this matter is deafening. Thank you. Anyone else that has a public comment tonight? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the first item for consideration, which is a second reading of Ordinance BG 2016-26. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a tract of land containing 0 0.19 acre from GB General Business to CB Central Business, located at 718 State Street, presently owned by CMC Properties, LLC. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. This is a second reading of a ordinance uh, was unanimously passed by planning and zoning. Are there any further discussion? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Second reading of ordinance BG 
Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a track of land containing 0.99 acre from HB Highway Business to RM4 Multifamily Residential, located at 556 Emmett Avenue, presently owned by New Millennium Real Estate, LLC. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. This is also a second reading of the ordinance that we discussed at the last meeting. Is there any further discussion or comments? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Now, Municipal Order 2016-169. Municipal Order approving the probationary appointments of Ryan D. Bessett, Keith A. Cassida, Jr., Cody W. Heimer, Austin J. Meredith, Andrew T. Newton, and William G. Smith to the position of police officer in the police department. Second. By Hill, second by Perrigan. Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. We're here tonight to uh, appoint uh, hopefully five new officers as well as to welcome back a, a former officer. As the commission knows, we go through uh, a, a twice a year a process of securing officers. We started off with 128 applicants of that universe. 82 showed up for what is known as the POP test and the, also the PAI test. Uh, from that, we had 55 people who showed up for the fitness test, uh, 47 of which passed. Uh, from that, we had uh, 17 who showed up for the polygraph, uh, which uh, 15 passed. From that group, we had eight who were interviewed by staff as well as uh, the Workforce Diversity Committee. And that distillation has produced the applicants uh, here before you. Uh, Doug is here if you have any questions. I think these gentlemen are with us tonight and we'd ask you to stand so that we can embarrass you in front of everybody here. <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen. I know many of you brought family and thank you all for coming here tonight. Have any comments or questions? I'm waiting, Joe, go ahead. <laughs> I don't think a bunch of gentlemen. Yeah. Great fellas. Okay. Congratulations to you. Please call the roll. Erigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Thank you so much. You got a lot of a lot of hard work ahead of you. Now municipal order 2016 170. Municipal order approving the promotions of Timothy W. Buchanan to the position of assistant police chief, Daniel R. Ashley to the position of company commander EMT, and Neil T. Clayton to the position of fire apparatus operator EMT in the fire department. So moved. Second. By Hill, second by um, Denning. Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you aptly uh, identified, uh, we had some recent retirement, which puts in play the need to backfill position. I would ask uh, Chief Jason Colson to come forward to put his uh, promotional nomination before this commission. Jason. Mayor and commissioners, I'm honored to be here uh, this afternoon presenting recommendations of promotion for three positions within the fire department, the first of which is assistant chief of suppression, also a company commander and a fire apparatus operator. A promotional testing for these positions took place in the fall of, of last year. For the assistant chief of suppression position, um, seven members met eligibility requirements and completed the promotional testing process, which included a written exam and various assessment center exercises. Uh, based on the results of the promotional testing, his performance, and his passion throughout his career, I'm here to recommend Tim Buchanan for promotion to Assistant Chief of Suppression for the Fire Department. So I'm gonna get Tim to please stand. Okay. Prior to joining the Bowling Green Fire Department in 2002, Tim was a graduate of Greenwood High School and attended Western Kentucky University. Uh, during his 14 years with the department, I'm confident in saying that Tim is one of, has been one of our most active members. He has served on various committees and programs, and he has worked very hard to prepare himself for this opportunity. Uh, Tim has completed courses and earned certifications uh, as a Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2. He's an EMT, also a hazmat technician. He's completed a fire inspector course. Also, he's a, a certified state fire instructor, both levels 1 and 2. He's completed Fire Officer 1 and also completed the Incident Safety Officer class. Additionally, Tim has attended Command Officer Boot Camp. Uh, he's attended classes specialized in high-rise operations, 
and has taken courses at both the Alabama Fire College and also the National Fire Academy. Uh, joining Tim this evening are his wife, Nikki, and his son, Landon. Again, Mayor and Commissioner, uh, Commissioners, it's my honor to recommend Tim Buchanan for promotion to Assistant Chief of the Bowling Green Fire Department. <laughs> Provided you promote Tim for the <laughs> position of <laughs> company commander, uh, 12 members met eligibility requirements and completed the promotional testing for that particular position. Uh, this evening, it is my honor to recommend Daniel Ashley uh, for promotion to company commander. Daniel is a 1996 graduate of Warren East High School, and he joined the department in 2006. Prior to that, Daniel attended Southern Kentucky Community and Technical Co College and also worked uh, with the uh, Glasgow Fire Department. Uh, Daniel, too, has served on various employee committees, awards committee, turnout committees during his career, and has also completed various courses and certifications, uh, such as Firefighter 1 and 2, is also an EMT, a hazmat technician, and an inspector and also is a state fire instructor both levels and has recently completed fire officer one. Uh, he serves as both the swift water and rope rescue technician for the, uh, the department. His supervisor, Captain Mike Harvey, describes Daniel as an excellent employee. His knowledge, skills, and confidence in his abilities will serve him in the city of Bowling Green well as a company commander. Whether it's been t teaching recruit classes, CPR classes for other firefighters, or performing fire safety inspections, Daniel always brings a great attitude and work ethic to the job every day. <coughs> Daniel has also been very active in our honor guard, which requires a personal sacrifice of his time, as the honor guard often uh, details off, often come up unexpectedly. So he has an eye for detail and sees to it that uh, the job is done correctly every time, uh, and is feel that he is one of the most well-rounded employees uh, that we have at this department. Joining Daniel this evening are his wife, Laura, and his mother, Rosalie Durbin. Again, Mayor and Commissioners, it is my honor to recommend Daniel Ashley for Company Commander of the Bowling Green Fire Department. Congratulations, Daniel. For the fire apparatus operator position, uh, 17 members met eligibility requirements and completed uh, various uh, uh, testing processes, which included a written exam and uh, various scenarios to measure their ability to operate a fire, op uh, fire apparatus. Uh, based on the results of that testing and his performance, I'm here to recommend Neil Clayton uh, for promotion to fire apparatus operator. Neil is a 2005 graduate of Greenwood High School, so the Gators win tonight. Um, his supervisor, Captain Brett Smith, describes Neil as being a dedicated firefighter for the city of Bowling Green since hired in November of 2010, and as displaying a high degree of professionalism in carrying out his duties. Neil has completed courses and earned certifications as a Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, and also a Fire Inspector. He has an associate's degree in fire science, is a National Registered EMT and is a member of the training committee in our trench rescue team. He is also a second generation Bowling Green firefighter. His father, retired Captain uh, Ray Clayton, is in attendance tonight, as are his mother, Benita, and his wife, Kara, along with numerous other family members, including his three children. So, again, Mayor and Commissioners, it is my honor to recommend Neil Clayton for promotion to fire apparatus operator for the city of Bowling Green. Yeah, I always think you, when you leave a department, you can't be replaced, but there's a lot of good people in line to come right up. So as always, next, the next person ready to go, we try to get everybody prepared. Any comments or questions? Congratulations to all of you. Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Congratulations again, and we'll take just a few minutes break for y'all to, to head out, because I know you got pictures you want to take, and... Uh, uh, places you want to be.
shows you. I mean, you know, he, he put both. So you've done him all his life. He's old. Yeah. <laughs> so are you feeling old? Hmm? Are you feeling old? I passed that <laughs> threshold a long time ago. Okay, we'll return back to the agenda for item number five, which is Municipal Order 2016-171. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2017-02 for Sloan Convention Center Lobby Furniture from Kerr Office Group of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, in the amount of $67,750. So move. Second. Second by Perridge and Mr. DeFebo. As the commissioner remembers, uh, we are in the process of uh, giving the Sloan Convention Center an, an uplift, uh, facelift, to make it more competitive looking. Um, part of that process is replacing the lobby furniture. We went out to bid. We had four bidders. Uh, the lowest bidder was Kerr Office Group of Elizabethtown. Uh, Mike is asking us to include uh, a little extra money not to exceed $67,750 to have system integrity to have Kerr install, uh, put together and install the equipment. Uh, Mike's here if you have any questions. Comments or questions? Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2016-172. Municipal Order authorizing and approving an agreement through non-competitive negotiations with Arnold Consulting Engineering Services of Bowling Green, Kentucky for engineering design and construction inspection services for Creekwood Avenue to Moss Middle School Greenways tra Trail in the amount of $31,220. So move. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perrigan, Mr. Febber. Thank you, Mayor. The city is... Uh, always in the process of trying to expand uh, the greenways. We're here tonight to uh, ask your authority uh, to hire Arnold Consulting Engineers of Bowling Green uh, to design a, a one-fourth mile of greenways from Creekwood Avenue to Moss Middle School. Uh, the money's coming for this greenway. It's from what is known as the TAP grant, uh, the Kentucky Department of Transportation. Uh, they allow uh, those who receive the grant to uh, work from a, a list of approved engineers and architect, uh, one of which is is ACES. Uh, a stat, our staff uh, vetted uh, the selection and we learned that Mac Yao, a former uh, public works director from Warren County will be part of the process. Uh, Greg is here, Greg Meredith is here. If you have any questions? Questions? Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Yes, sir. Since Greg's been here, we haven't asked him a whole lot of questions. Is this some kind of problem? <laughs> <laughs> I still like him, Jill. Mm -hmm. we, we talk to him at, outside of meetings sometimes, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Municipal Order 2016-173. Municipal order approving a contract through competitive purchase with Kenny Machinery Corporation of Indianapolis, Indiana, under the Kentucky State Pricing Contract for the trade-in and purchase of seven Toro Workman Utility Vehicles, three Toro Greensmaster 3150, one Toro Sand Pro 5040, and one Toro 4300 Fairway Mower for the Parks and Recreation Department in the net amount of $282,585.12. Second. Bill second by Perrigan, Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we mentioned during the buzz budget message, uh, this is probably the first year in many, possibly since 2008, uh, that we have uh, been able to uh, work out of the recession. And one of the needs that we have coming out of the recession is a need for equipment that was put off for many years. Uh, item number seven asks you to allow us in our park and rec department uh, to purchase 20 pieces of equipment uh, using the master uh, Kentucky State Agreement, which goes out and acquires all the competition uh, statewide. Uh, Brent is here if you have any, any questions. 
comments or questions? Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2016-174. Municipal Order approving a contract through cooperative purchase with Wayne Supply Company of Bowling Green, Kentucky under the Kentucky State Pricing Contract for the trade-in and purchase of a skid steer loader and backhoe attachment for the Parks and Recreation Department in the net amount of $53,196. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill. Second by Williams. Uh, continuing that theme of a meeting uh, suppressed need, we're here again under item number eight to ask you to allow us to purchase uh, from Wayne Supply of Bowling Green a much needed skid steer loader and backhoe attachment to help us do a, a good job of maintaining our, our soccer fields. This also provides uh, for a trade in of our Bobcat and it is uh, made possible through the state. Uh, state pricing contract of which Wayne Supply is, is part of that. Again, Mr. Belcher, if, you're, if you have any questions. Uh, one thing, Katie, I, I believe Wayne is misspelled. Okay, we'll get that corrected. It has an H. We'll get that corrected. Any comments or questions? Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Order 2016-175. Municipal order approving a contract through cooperative purchase with Deer and Company of Cary, North Carolina through Wright Implement <coughs> 1 LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky under the Kentucky State Pricing Contract for the trade-in and purchase of a John Deere 5075M utility tractor with a loader for the Parks and Recreation Department in the net amount of $40,257.63. So moved. Second. Hopefully you know it's a common theme. It's our goal this year to uh, urge uh, departments to uh, purchase their equipment early in the budget year as well as to get projects started and completed during the same year. So we're here again under item number nine to uh, use the state contract, in this case to award uh, a local Bowling Green company uh, a contract to allow us to purchase a 50 75 utility tractor and loader which will be used primarily at, at crosswinds uh, again uh, Brent is here if you have any questions like Christmas for Brent tonight exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say <laughs> Merry Christmas <laughs> can we try those out I, I'd like to personally try one like you say it's it's years ago and we finally have the funds to do that without borrowing any money so please call the roll origin yes Williams yes Denning has stepped out Hill yes Wilkerson order 2016-176 municipal order authorizing and accepting the purchase of three additional trucks under bid number 2016-15, package D, from Gilly Hyde Auto Group of Glasgow, Kentucky, in the total amount of $83,811. So move. Second. A heel second by Perry. All on the same theme of purchasing the equipment we need, we're here today uh, to ask you under item number 10 to allow us to buy uh, three trucks uh, for both public works and park. Uh, we went out to bid. We had eight bidders, and the low, lowest responsible bidder was Gilly Hyde. Either Brent or, or Greg could answer any questions you have. Comments or questions? Call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2016 Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2017-10 for the purchase of a utility vehicle for the fire department from Campbell Chevrolet of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $42,996. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, finally, uh, we went out to uh, bid uh, for a new utility vehicle for the fire department. We had three bidders. We're happy to announce the low bidder was Campbell Chevrolet uh, and uh, Jason or uh, maybe Jason's not here yet. Um, 
I can answer any questions you have about purchasing the vehicle, but the low bidder was Campbell, and it's a vehicle that will be used by the uh, fire department. Great low bid, too. Correct. Comments or questions? On the road. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2016-178. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2017-08 for fiscal year 2017 street overlay from Scotty's Contracting and Stone LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $1,582,863.40 and further authorizing staff to add additional streets to this unit price bid for a total project amount not to exceed $2 million. So move. Second. Well and second by Perrigan, Mr. Fibbo. Thank you, Mayor. Based on the will of this commission, we have made a uh, consistent effort to increase the amount of money the city uh, uh, provides uh, for paving, and that has increased significantly over the last uh, three to five years, uh, particularly the last two. This year's budget, we have up to $2 million, to, uh, which is the highest amount ever for uh, paving our streets. We went out to bid for paving material. We had two bidder, and the low bidder uh, is Scotty's Contracting and Stone. Uh, Greg Meredith is here if you'd like to hear him talk about paving. This is alphabetical, but it's not in the order they're going to be paved. No, no, it's just alphabetical. Is it on, on the website? Uh, it should be on the website, yes. Okay. So people can look and expect when their street, if they're on this list, maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes. Any other comments or questions? Get anything you wish to add? No, we're excited about, you know, the, I think like uh, Mr. DeFabo said, there's a, there's a backload of need, a backlog of projects that, that are needed in terms of street paving, and, and this is uh, going to help us move in, that, in the right direction. I think we continue this and we'll make a real difference. So thank you all. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2016-28. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a tract of land containing 20.586 acres from AG Agriculture to PUD Planned Unit Development located on Russellville Road, presently owned by Cook and Davenport, LLC. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill. Second by Wood. Mayor, Mr. Peterson's here. If you have any questions, the commission has any questions about this recommendation from the Planning Commission. First reading of the ordinance and the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Commission meetings here with a, a unanimous vote for approval. Do you have any questions or comments? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. 2016-179. Municipal order authorizing the sale of a, of a, sorry, authorizing the lease of a portion of 225 East 3rd Avenue to Community Action of Southern Kentucky Incorporated and authorizing the mayor to execute the lease agreement. So moved. Second. Second. Bad. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one of the things that the, I, I feel we do a, a great job is, is helping uh, f families and young children uh, with after school program in cooperation with Community Action. Uh, that's been ruled by a 20-year lease in which they rent part of the Moxley building. That lease has expired. We're here to ask your permission to execute a new lease. Uh, I would like Brent to come up to briefly uh, explain to you some of the uh, changes that uh, we have made to the lease. Brent? Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Febo. Uh, can be really brief in that uh, really the only change we have is the utility item, the, the bullet about the utility. I uh, wanted to make it a straightforward and easy for both organizations to, uh, to understand how it works. So it's going to be a, uh, roughly that is a quarter of the utility bill on average per month. Uh, we feel that's right and just, and uh, if I may say, because uh, uh, based on our past performance, we feel like uh, on square footage, the square footage is actually a third of the square footage, the, the 20-some thousand is a third. But you consider we have two gymnasium floors that we're lighting. We use uh, more than uh, than that, and so we think two thousand dollars is is a nice uh, number for us to have per month uh, uh, and be uh, 
adjust, like I say, in, in their monthly expenditures for the utility bill. Uh, outside of that, everything else is exactly the same as was 20 years ago. Uh, be one dollar a year for the payment, and uh, we, uh, as Mr. Febo mentioned, proud partners and neighbors with Community Action, uh, and uh, definitely look forward to the next 20 years. Uh, both organizations uh, fulfilling and serving this community. Have an excellent represented representative present, Miss Cardwell sat in there. I uh, known her for many many years. Used to spank her when she was a little girl because she and my daughter are the best of friends, and I used to have to get rough with them every now and then. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Belcher. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Harrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2016. Municipal Order authorizing the approval and of the funding policy for the City of Bowling Green Police and Firefighters Pension Fund. Second. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, prior to the arrival of CERS uh, statewide uh, retirement system, the city of Bowling Green had its own uh, retirement sister system. We still have a number of uh, persons who receive uh, a check and benefits from that. We're here tonight to recommend some uh, changes to that uh, program uh, leading us in the recommendation will be Jeff Meisel. Jeff? I'll try to be as brief as possible, but um, <clears throat> I tried to kind of outline kind of some history in the, the memo that I put in your packets, but this fund uh, as of July 1st of this year has about $7.2 million in assets and we are at 39 participants. Um, over the years, the city has uh, contributed every year back to 1989 and I went back and looked all that up and it, it's totaled a little bit over $5 million in city contributions. So uh, basically you can say that the city contributions in a way have made this fund actuarially sound because if you take that 5 million away from the 7.2 million, we'd probably be sitting here at $2 million with many several years to go. So the actuaries uh, for the last several years has been recommending that we, we put together a funding policy and uh, what that funding policy does is it kind of gives them some parameters on how to base their some of their assumptions on uh, what we're going to how we're going to catch up with the uh, with the unfunded liability. And as of seven one sixteen, with if you assume no more colas, this fund was at ninety eight point five percent funded. So we've come a long way. Uh, we I put in your packets uh, kind of a summary, but as you can see, back in some of the years we were. I think we were at $2 million uh, <coughs> back in um, uh, FY09, we hit a two, almost a $2.4 million unfunded liability, and we've, we've managed to claw our way back ever since 2009. And at, as of today, as of July 1st of this year, with a 0% color, we were only $110,000 from being breaking even with it. So uh, we put this policy together to kind of give us some direction because every year we've kind of scratched our heads and said, well, what should we contribute? Uh, here's what the actuary says. Well, what have we been doing? We've never had a real clear uh, direction on what we want to put into the fund. And as you can see, uh, we funded it well and the t retirees have been able to get a COLA every year but 2013. So that's, that's over 20 years of COLAs which this has enabled um, this fund to remain actual or actuarially sound. So what we've uh, put together is, I'll just highlight a few points in, under the, the policy, is we wanna establish a, a policy that's gonna get this um, uh, method to an actuarially determined contribution. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this report every year from the actuary and we're gonna look at the five-year amortization number for a 1% COLA and the reason we picked 1% COLA is we, caught, we thought that was pretty fair. It, it's been our kind of our five-year average. And we thought that was fair uh, for the retirees, and it was, we thought it was a fair uh, point for the city, too, to make its, base its contribution. So we're going to look at the report every year, see what that five-year amortization number is for, for a 1% COLA, 
and it's really a speedier amortization than the actuary would would even uh, be comfortable with. He he would been okay with the ten year, but I think we need to be aggressive, get this thing caught up to, to 100 percent as soon as possible, and kind of watch it and see where it goes. So that's one of the um, the uh, principles here. The other one is to get it to 100%, uh, take the five-year number, and then on the back page there, uh, we, we want to look at what the funded ratio is each year. And as long as it's above 95%, then uh, we're recommending or we're saying that it's okay for the PNF board to give themselves a COLA of approximately 1% as long as that doesn't exceed uh, you know, something we can't afford. So we're going to watch that closely. But this kind of gives the actuary uh, a policy to go by that says we don't have to give you a 2% unfunded liability anymore. We can, make, we can calculate it at a 1% liability, which makes a big difference. I think last year, uh, I can't remember what the number was, was, was well over a million dollars that showed we were, we were underfunded. And, it, it all comes down to, well, how realistic is it we're going to give a 2% COLA from now until, until the end of the fund? It's probably not real realistic. So we've backed that down. Uh, the actuary is now showing a 1% fun unfunded liability in his last report, which equates to $591,000. So if you were amortized the $591,000 over the next five years, the city would only have to co contribute about $140,000. That, that will be that will have to be tweaked a little bit by depending on how the fund does as far as return on assets does but uh, that's going to be pretty close to the number we've been averaging about a five percent return the last couple years uh, this fund assumes that it's going to make six percent so we've been kind of under that mark but uh, we feel like this is a good good policy good starting point that we can uh, work off of in the coming years and we can come back to and tweak as we need to but this was um, vented to the the board. Uh, they were in in t total agreement with it, and it's also been uh, uh, reviewed by the actuary, and he's okay with it too. So we're bringing it to you tonight for a formal approval. Uh, it helps us going forward with our budget. So we use we'll use this to um, put the budget together next spring for the contribution to the police and fire pension fund. Comments. I think it's good that we have an expected plan to go by every year. That's that's great. Yeah, and my apologies for taking this long to put it together, but uh, it, it was it's kind of it's been kind of tough to put together, but we finally got it done. So, if the state would only do that. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Perigen. Yes. Williams. Yes. Denning. Yes. Hill. Yes. Wilkerson. Yes. Municipal Order 2016-181. Municipal Order approving the submission of the Fiscal Year 2016 Section 8 Management Assessment Program Certification for the Housing Choice Voucher Program. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mayor. As we're remembered, uh, the city receives what is known as Housing Choice Vouchers, formerly re referred to as Section 8 Certificates. Uh, to help people uh, pay for their rent in uh, private uh, lodging. Uh, we have to submit a plan which is known in HUD logic as a CMAP certification. It requires your approval to allow us to submit it. Uh, we believe that upon submission we will be rated as a high performer as we have almost every year since we've had it. Uh, Brent uh, Childers is here if you'd like to uh, entertain uh, how the CMAP works and what we're trying to accomplish. Appreciate the last sentence in his, in his uh, memo there. We expect to receive a full score this year. I like that anticipation. Thank you, sir. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2016-29. Ordinance annexing property by consent. Ordinance annexing a total 
of approximately 234.79 acres of property located on or near Bluegrass Farms Boulevard and Plano Road, with property presently owned by Stanley Darr, Kenneth and Mary Gregory, Natcher Parkway Holdings, LLC, Brian Keith Marr, Warren County School Board, and the Commonwealth of Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, with said territory being contiguous to existing city limits and further approving associated economic development annexation incentive agreements. So moved. A hill and second by Denny, Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. A number of years ago, the City Commission uh, passed a policy to provide an incentive <laughs> for those who were interested in, in coming in into the city. We felt this incentive was necessary in order to maintain our fiscal viability as we go forward into the future to provide uh, space not only for residents but for economic development. We're happy to say that uh, some of the efforts that have been made over the last couple of years uh, tonight are coming to fruition. Personally, I'd like to thank the mayor and a number of the other commissioners who have worked on this. It might be helpful if uh, Brent uh, Childers came forward to get, take you around, around the, uh, the ordinance, then Gene will add any uh, legal comment. Brent? Thank you, Mr. DeFebo. Uh, this is a very large consensual annexation so this is all consent uh, everybody has signed off saying yes we want to be in the city and just as Mr. DeFebo said the policy was an integral part in making this happen having the incentive policy um, whenever I went out to talk to some of the, the individual property owners I was able to say you know you can come into the city and here's what else we have to offer I had another tool to give them a, to make that argument uh, but this is is a combination of properties it's it's a large uh, varied track of land out there and it's really the property from Scottsville Road to Natural Parkway, Plano Road to I-65. There's still a few parcels that aren't coming in as part of this but it's uh, going to pick up mainly everything around the Natural Parkway extension uh, and along Plano Road and including Plano Road. That's where the transportation cabinet comes in. Uh, the Gregory, Marr and Dar properties are residential properties along uh, Plano Road and they've all consented. Uh, we'll take the incentive agreement uh, natural parkway holdings being the large landowner uh, out there uh, which is kind of the driving force for a lot of this annexation and then the school board property is right behind the Greenwood high school softball field uh, there was kind of an out parcel there uh, so those are the properties that we're bringing in a total of 234 acres but I want to go back to the decisions that we made several years ago about offering this incentive were, were vital in, in helping uh, make this uh, happen and I'll entertain any questions anyone might have. Your questions? I'd just like to reiterate, hope Wes would consider putting this in there. We're not going after neighborhoods that don't want to be a part of the city. We're uh, encouraging uh, potential industrial and business areas to come into the city with an economic development incentive, and that's that's been our approach. Dark consensual, yes. Comments or questions? When will such things as street lights uh, be implemented uh, in those areas? Right now, the only public right of way would be Plano Road uh, that's coming in. Everything else, the only actual developed portions of this 230 acres is three homes, and that's the Mar, Dar, and Gregory property. So everything else is just farmland. Uh, right now it's corn and it'll probably be wheat here in a few weeks if you if you wait till the corn's shelled out uh, but right now it'd just be Plano Road uh, and, and we could look at uh, bringing that in but with the natural interchange being right there a portion of that's already street lighted uh, so we're not talking about any neighborhood streets or internal streets or anything like that we're just talking about Highway 622 and police protection and fire protection police and fire with the and having Greenwood Fire Station uh, right there at the end uh, was was very vital also in making this this argument. They understood that they had a full-time fire station very nearby. And and one clarification: make sure everybody's aware too. Plano Road is a state highway, so while we will provide police and fire protection, there is no um, street maintenance right. uh, for the city since that is a state right away. Any other questions or comments? All right, please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2016 30. 
Ordinance expanding WKU Gateway to downtown Bowling Green TIF development area. Ordinance expanding the WKU Gateway to downtown Bowling Green Tax Increment Financing District to create a local tax increment financing development area in a portion of Block 203. Approving a tax increment financing development plan for the local tax increment financing area and approving the supplement to the amended and restated local participation agreement number four. Second. Second. By Hill, second by Perridge and Mr. Fibbo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item 18 and 19 are in the same family of action. This is a result of uh, Dr. Zia asking us to amend uh, the, the TIF district, which takes a couple technical moves. Uh, Gene Harmon's going to explain uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Gene? Uh, as everybody would recall, we were here a few weeks ago uh, when Dr. Z approached the, uh, uh, the authority about expanding. The word is really not expanding, it's more like fixing, I think everybody agreed to. Uh, for some reason, when we did the original TIF district, we only took in about half the block around Park and Sixth. Uh, what this will do will expand in a minute to, to pick up the remainder of that block all the way around Park, all the way to Sixth. Um, once you gave the initial go ahead to do that, uh, we went back, of course, and looked at the state statutes. There were a couple things we had to do first. We had to create a development plan, uh, and um, Scott Backer spent a lot of time on that and a lot of the documents as well, too. Uh, so we got the development plan done. Uh, then by state statute, we were required to hold a public hearing, which we did, prior to a uh, physical court meeting at about 8.30 in the morning on a Friday morning. We held a public hearing, and as might be expected, other than the people uh, like uh, Mr. Hinton and the other people, nobody showed up and made comments. We've had no comments on that. Uh, so following that, we finalized the development plan. That's on this uh, ordinance to be approved tonight as well. So we have to approve the development uh, plan. Uh, we also have to actually physically uh, amend the TIF district boundaries to pick up this area. Um, this did require a couple of uh, amendments to various documents, the local participation agreement. For some reason, by state statute, that was required to be an ordinance. So we are about ordinance making minor amendments to that, uh, to that plan. We are, the next municipal order will approve the amendments to local participation agreement because since we now are bringing in a new business and we're now promising that new business uh, income tax increment financing, uh, we had to amend that plan to set that out to make sure everybody does, is aware that uh, revenue sharing agreement commits 50% of the uh, TIF revenue generated from this project to Dr. Z and his companies. We're not really sure exactly what those companies may be, but he's still working on that. Uh, and the other 50% will go to um, uh, to Warren County to be spent on TIF projects uh, in the area and some of their debt, just like the remainder of that same Block 203. This is where basically we're just adding this to Block 203. Um, the city, we, you know, we will create some adjusted revenues just like all the other blocks, so that will go into the dedicated adjustment block. And since Dr. Zia is coming in from an existing city location, uh, his base will become we think 2016, since he's not started building yet, uh, but we anticipate the base will be 2016. Whatever it be, it'll be the year before he moves in, will be his base since he's moving in from existing location. As everybody is aware, this is a, uh, a medical facility that's so relocating from another place. I think we're going to bring in, what, 10, 12 new employees, at least a $5 million investment downtown. Uh, I think the plan sets out, everybody considers that's a... Um, uh, a good idea to a new addition to the area down there. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure I have anything else, so I'll be brief as well. Uh, Commissioner Hill is on the authority, and they've already approved this. Jeff can comment as well. Uh, we do have Scott Backer, the attorney for the authority here, if you have any questions for him. Uh, and Larry Hinton is the attorney for Dr. Z, if anybody has any questions for him. That summary, brief as it was, any yes. other comments or questions? Make sure all of our bases are covered on that, so. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2016-182. Municipal Order Approving Supplemental Second Amended and Restated Agreement on Revenue of Sharing of, sharing of Revenues, sorry, related to Block 203 Expansion of the WKU Gateway to Downtown Bowling Green Tax Increment Financing Development Area. So moved. Second by Denning. Uh, I think... Uh, Gene's preamble also uh, served to explain item number 19. Any other discussion or comments? Please call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2016-183. Municipal order declaring 405 Beach Street surplus property and authorizing sale of 
by sealed bids. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. We received uh, 405 of Beach Street uh, through a master commissioner sale. Uh, we are not in the business of trying to aggregate property. This property has no public purpose and it is staff desire uh, to sell that to the highest bidder. So we're seeking your approval uh, to do that. I'll roll. Arjun? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Our next scheduled meeting is September 20th, 2016 and we have a executive session to go no, into no vote no vote tonight so thank you for tuning in